Well, I've always been an advocate of navigate, you know, managing our deficits and um, and you know we've been blessed as a nation that the world appreciates our global position and we are we are awarded that type of trust and that trust is being I would say being tested right now. We created a, a, a remarkably large deficit and the deficit is getting worse. We created a budget that has increased the deficit by $300 billion in, in this fiscal year on top of this huge fiscal stimulus. The CBO before this has estimated the deficit over the next 10 years uh, to grow to um, $33 trillion. In their estimates, they're assuming a 3% economy. Uh, so even with an elongated, elevated economy, we're still estimating this huge deficit. Now, if the economy can't grow at 3% a year, which is above trend line, uh, the percent to GDP will not be that difficult, even in $33 trillion. But if many economists believe the fiscal policy is going to front end the growth of the economy and we're going to grow at maybe three, three and a half, maybe even four this year or next and then we'll normalize back down to the two and a half range. If that's the case, we're going to have um, a real problem with debt to GDP um, and at the same time we are now pushing our trading partners. Some of our trading partners are big owners in, our, in the U.S. Um, treasury market. I don't see this as an outcome, but there could be some threats of, of okay, we're going to create, we're changing the, 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 the structure of our trading agreements. Um, maybe we will restructure how much U.S. debt we own. And all that could lead to elevated interest rates at a time where you know, the, the, the global economy is not at full capacity. And importantly, the, I would say, the emotions of the world are not, I don't even think they're at the point of where the economy is. I think people feel, most people feel that things are worse than they actually are. Um, and, and I think um, that should be a big issue we all focus on over the next, next month, next year, next five years, that the sustainability of these deficits, can they be adequately financed at rates that do not disrupt the financial markets. And I, I think that, you know, we're not seeing any evidence yet. I mean, interest rates, by and large, are pretty low. Um, in fact, they're historically low by all standards. I'm not particularly worried if, it, if the 10 year U.S. Treasury goes to three and a quarter, three and a half. Would I get worried if the U.S. 10 year rates get, get to 4% or four and a half? At those levels, then you're going to start seeing really strong alternatives to the equity markets, and you're going to see, you'd probably see a, a restructuring, a uh, downward draft in, in, in global equities. Could a higher 10 year rate start uh, putting pressure on global GDP? And, and so these are things we all have to focus on. They're not problems at the moment, but they could be really big problems in the future. One problem that we're having at the moment uh, is our trading relationship with the U.S., um, including tariffs on steel and aluminum that have immediate effect, but longer term renegotiating this trade deal in ways that may actually hurt Canada. Uh, how concerned do you think America's trading partners need to be about the position that it's now taking on trade? Let me start off and say I think the biggest mistake that we are making in the United States, we are blessed by having two great neighbors. I think we are blessed um, uh, because we have two great oceans in between everyone else and so we have more protections than other places of the world and, and we're blessed with huge natural resources and we're actually blessed with pretty good weather relative to other places in the world and so I, I'm always troubled that we're not trying to create the most important alliance together for our three countries becoming more powerful and working closer together. To me, that's the, you know, whether, whether the new NAFTA moves the dial 2%, 3% one way or the other, I'm less concerned about that. Now that may be a more immediate issue. I am more concerned about, about how we, can we find ways of really becoming that 
international powerhouses, three great nations. And I do believe, and I, you know, earlier this week I was in Mexico, I was in Montreal yesterday. I really believe the opportunities between our three nations are as great as any place. We spend so much time focused on the opportunities in, South, in, in, in Southeast Asia, in China. We underappreciate our own our own positions relative to what's uh, r related to the issues of trade. I don't think it's inappropriate to relook at a 1994 trading treaty. I would have liked to have seen it done privately, quietly, constructively, as friends and as neighbors. Okay, I have a different style. I'm not trying to, uh, but, um, and what, what, whatever the outcome may be, related to a reevaluation re of the trading treaty. Uh, if it's done in a fair, just way, it, we'll find ways of, of making it happen. And as I said earlier, if we, felt, if we built a greater unity between our three nations of finding ways of competing globally, uh, the growth of all three nations would be better off. So I think actually we're focusing, we're focusing on on, on, tr on this one trading treaty, and we're not focusing on the greatest opportunities we have. And that to me is sad.